Hey, everybody. Whoa, scared oh. me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's Ron Bass with another edition of The Ron Bass Show, your source for inspiration, encouragement, motivation. Sometimes a little humor over here of Mr. Brent Atterbury, our marketing guru, executive producer. He thinks he's pretty funny, actually. But no. I don't want to hurt his feelings. Big fancy titles. At <laughs> any rate, well, last time or two, we were talking about distractions. Three. Oh boy, have I been distracted lately. Woo! Yes. Brent and I have been having all kinds of conversations lately about stuff that's been going on in our lives, my life. But you know what? you got to go down before you can come up. Okay. you got to go down yes. before you can come back up. Yes. So I wanted to review some of those distractions just to kind of like make a quick little list and discuss them briefly before we move on to some new topics. And, you know, the bottom line is, guys, distractions is what's going to keep you from accomplishing accomplishments. Accomplishments, the drug. If you can accomplish anything, you're going to feel so good about yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's just you lost 10 pounds in the last month because you want to lose some weight. I mean, that's a big, big, big deal. You don't have to. If you're 100 pounds overweight and you lost 10 pounds, pat yourself on the back. I mean, that's a big accomplishment. Um, so the reason that I think we don't get to these goals and don't accomplish these goals is because we get very distracted. One of the things that I find it's a big problem is being duped, having people in your life that will take advantage of your good nature. Um, they're, they're hustling you, so to speak. You know, these are, these are people that are very, uh, they seem to be okay, but they're not. In the end, they're very, you find out they're very disingenuous and they take advantage of you and they use you because you're, you're a good guy and you're good natured. And you can't allow that. You have to be around the right kind of people, people that you uh, most aspire to want to become like. Be around people that are setting a good example for you. If you want to be a better business person, be around a successful business person. If you want to be a better athlete, hang around a successful athlete. You get the idea. It's not that complicated. So con artists, be, you know, those kinds of people you want to stay away from, man. Get away from as far as you can get. Um, drugs and alcohol, you know, big problem, man. Big problem. And people that are born with the addictive personalities, man, they got it really bad. Because once they start on that stuff... They can't get it up. And then, you know, people that people that don't have like an addictive personality, they could probably drink occasionally, drug occasionally, and it's not a big deal. But if you got that bad gene, man, you're screwed. And you can't I've got a employee that came by the other day. Man, this guy was on a trip. He was blowing and going about things that you, it, it was like something you read in a science fiction magazine. And he thought and, and he really believed what he was telling me. He was fantasizing. He was obviously hallucinating, and he, and he's doing a lot of drugs. And and he, and, but he really believes that he heard and saw these things. And then he came back a few days later, and he and he made the comment to me, "Man, I got to get off that stuff." Well, obviously he knows he's doing drugs, and he knows it's affecting him, but he doesn't have the willpower to give it up. So I said, "Look, man, I did a lot of drugs when I was young. I was did a lot of pills, and I had a big problem. But I said I quit." And when I quit, it took me about six months before I felt normal. It was not easy. It was a long, drawn-out, difficult process. But I knew I had to do it, no matter what the cost was, because the alternative would have been a lifetime of hell. And I was probably in my early 30s when I quit. And I didn't want to go, you know, the rest of my life and be that. I didn't want to be that, be that person. So drugs and alcohol is a big problem gambling is a big problem i know a lot of people that just gamble 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 on anything <laughs> they'll bet, gamble on i bet you the train doesn't come by here uh anytime during our podcast i bet it doesn't because the train already came by before we started the podcast <laughs> speaking of gambling gambling okay. oh yeah i, I lost true. that one yeah we, yeah there you go um gamble gamble you can even gamble on the on the presidency they have betting odds, right? The election, so, yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty crazy. Yeah. They're betting that Trump is going to be like two to two to one over, or it's like 60% he's going to win, and she's like 30-something percent. Depends on the poll you look at. Yeah, which poll. But nobody's a soothsayer. Nobody knows. For, nobody's got a crystal ball. No. The other thing that concerns me about a guy like Trump is that what happened, I mean, they've already tried to kill him twice. So you've got that possibility again and then you've got the possibility of health he's almost 80 just like biden's 80 something so you know as you get older obviously the more chances you have of 
physical problems and ailments and illnesses. And mm -hmm. so, you know, no matter how it plays out, even if Trump wins the presidency, who's to say that he's, he'll be able to serve? Who's to say that it'll work out well? You know, nobody knows. Nobody knows the, you know, how it's all going to be. And I think I think there's so much sensationalism when it comes to politics. Yes. Um, everywhere you turn, radio, TV, internet, it's just sensationalism, sensationalism, sensationalism. I think if they would all watch our podcast, they would be motivated to do a good job all the time. I like that. Yeah. So tell your friends and family. And by the way, I appreciate all the referrals that we're getting from our subscribers. They're telling a lot of their friends to watch us, and they're we're picking up a lot of new subscribers and. Thank you it's so very much, nice. guys. We appreciate that. So I went to the convenience store this morning to get a uh, beef stick. I like to, when I go to the gym, I like to eat eat something while I'm working out. It gives me some just, you know, just enough energy to, to, to do the workout. And the guy at the store said, well, aren't you going to get your drink today? And I said, I'll be back in for that after my workout. That's my treat is to get a root beer. So I went back in a little while ago, and I said, okay, here it is. I just finished my workout. And he looked at me like, blank. And I thought to myself, this guy's got, like, no personality. And he's not the only one. Like, have you noticed how people are so stoic? In fact, I've got a, I've got a comment in here, or, or a page of uh, notes in here to talk about how people are so stoic. Like, when you go into a store... Uh, I went to a store the other day and, and, and people were just so quiet. Nobody was talking. And the guy behind the counter was like, just blank stare. I think I might have mentioned this. And I said to him, what is it? I said, everybody looks so depressed in here. And he looks at me with this blank stare. And he said, do I look depressed? And I go, yeah. And he go, and then he smiled and I go, that's better. <laughs> and he kind of chuckled and I chuckled a little bit. I don't know what it is. Like people are just so stressed out right now. Everywhere you go, how about how about like you know, smiling and 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 complimenting people and being nice to people and opening the door for people and little things that might just cheer them up just a little bit. I mean, it, it's not like it's not like we've got that much stress going on. Just That's because, right. Just because it's almost World War Three and <laughs> everybody's going crazy with the presidency and we got wars going all over the world. I mean. Come on, guys. We have we have to focus on positive. We have to realize how lucky we really are, and if, in particular, if you're healthy and fit and you've got goals, man, you're way ahead of the curve. So every day you should think about that. Set some goals. Go to the gym. Put a smile on your face. Yes, there's things you probably don't have that you want, whether it's money or 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 certain things in your life like relationships and you want things to be different or better but man look how lucky you are don't take it for granted that you've got a lot going for yourself already so so much for uh maybe so they much should also eat a beef, beef stick yeah <laughs> i'm telling you there's nothing like eating a beef stick while you're on the stairmaster <laughs> climbing that sounds horrible a hundred floors it sounds awful it takes me 30 minutes to climb a hundred floors think about that 30 minutes. It's like almost climbing to the top of the Empire State Building. But I can tell you that the reward for that is crazy good. There's nothing like it. Sense of accomplishment. When you sleep, you sleep, boy. You don't you don't wake up unless you have to go pee, which when you're old, you got to get up and go pee all the time. It's part of the part of the process, part of what happens when you get old. Uh, but other than that, you're sleeping soundly, man. And you just you're just healthier i took my blood pressure last night for my age it was super normal um i'm not bragging i'm just explaining and that you know what's what i think would be good for you to consider now i'm not saying everybody's got to get on the stairmaster and do 100 floors but if you can just, if you get 10 minutes a day on the treadmill that would be great yeah or walk for 10 minutes or walk yeah. for 20 minutes yep they say if you walk 150 minutes a week that that's all you need to keep your blood pressure good and your mental health good and your blood flowing good and your, you know your muscles and so what do you think i think 150 minutes sounds like a lot <laughs> we need to say it differently okay how about 30 minutes and 20 minutes a day yeah that sounds better. okay that sounds better yeah um <laughs> so i was thinking the other day about what i was 
in high school, I was involved in a lot of speech tournaments, and I went to Philadelphia for a national, I, I actually had won a local tournament, state tournament, a regional tournament, and I was going to this wow. national tournament. Yeah. I haven't heard this story. No, you haven't heard this story? No. So I'm in Philadelphia. I was 16 years old, and uh, I, um, I think I got third place. There was like six of us. I think I got third, something like that. But I, was, I remember there were thousands of people in this audience, and I was like a nervous wreck, right? But I did it. And so and I, 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 uh, I kind of got in trouble because I was hanging out with this young girl that was also a, um, a competitor, and the chaperones got mad at me. And basically, I kind of had to get the heck out of Philadelphia. So I was at the airport and had to spend the night in the airport and wound up in Kansas City. And then I only had enough money to take a bus to Clinton, Missouri, which is about an hour and a half from Springfield, Missouri, where I live, right? And I just was thinking about this the other day, how crazy it is. Here I was, you know, like 16 years old. I get off the bus because that's all the money I had to take me there. And I hitchhiked from Clinton, Missouri to Springfield, Missouri at 16 years old. Now, in today's world, you know, it, it, people still hitchhike, but it's a little more dangerous than it used yeah. to be. And I got a ride with a business guy. He owned a car lot in Springfield, Missouri. I'll never forget that. And he gave me a ride to Springfield, and uh, that was pretty cool. I don't know why I was thinking about that, other than I think when you're young, you, you're you're more brave. You 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 don't you don't think things through. It's like like I'll just heck I can do anything. More brave or not as smart? And no, uh, maybe it's a little <laughs> bit of both, right? Not crazy. No, I don't know why. So did you know you were gonna not have enough money to get home before you left? You know, or did you just? I think I figured just, that out. I, as I think you I went. just overspent. Oh, I can't remember all the details because I was given some money before I left, and so bad money manager. At yeah, 16. I was. All, I've always been a bad money manager. <laughs> Story of my life, guys. <laughs> but the biggest advantage I have is that I'm not a quitter. Yep, I'm resilient. I was uh, watching an article or read an article from um, President Trump the other day, and he was saying that people that can manage pressure, that can handle pressure are more likely to be successful than people that cannot. And he prides himself in being able to handle a lot of pressure. And so I think I've taken a page out of that playbook over my course of my life. But exercise will help you so much when it comes to managing uncomfortableness. It just does. So I know I always get back to talking about exercise, but it's, it's, it's a big deal, guys, particularly when you're old. When you're young, you could probably get by with a lot of things, but I you can't. You can't do it when you get old. But I, but I think you exercise for different reasons at that point. True. And when you're younger, you still get the, the, uh, the endorphins. You still yes. feel better. You, you, you're more. Uh, your endurance is better. Yes. So I still. Speaking think of old, I had a, our kids' class was last night in our in our martial arts school, and this three or four five year old girl. The, the sister of one of the girls that, that uh, trains and competes was sitting in my office with me. She, she wanted to draw. So I had my pad there and she called it a drawing, a coloring book. And I said, no, this is a tablet. And she was, she said, this is a coloring book. I said, if a coloring book, you'd have to have crayons. She had a pen. I was teasing with her. And so she was sitting in my producer's chair. And I said, that's a very special chair. I don't let very many people sit in that chair. And she was, oh. She says, I don't want to leave. I said, well, you're, you're going to have to leave in class. I said, no, I'm going to stay here. So okay, whatever. So uh, she says, uh, she said, how come you work out? I said, because it helps me to feel better. She said, but you're old. <laughs> I said, well, thanks a lot. I said, that's even more of a reason to work, to work out. out. But she put it in perspective. Yeah. That makes you realize just how old you really are when a kid well, says that to you. Yeah. But it's also, uh, you know, uh, it's a perception that's well, when you're three years that, old, 20 is probably old. Yeah. Yeah. But regardless. But that's even more the reason why you have to work out. Particularly, you know, when you are old. That's the only shot you got. You just, you have to work out. Okay. Uh, on to the next subject. <laughs> have you ever noticed how people always quit right before something great is going to happen. 
It's been my experience through my whole life. I've seen this over and over and over and over and over and over again. People get so frustrated and so discouraged that they give up on something. But they quit before it actually. It for, before it actually have, manifests. They didn't know it was going to. They didn't know, but okay. I. But I. But I've always been able to witness from the outside the circumstances. So when they stepped to the side, the next person in line was able to take advantage of that opportunity. And I've seen this happen a lot. So I say that to say this, it happened even in my company recently where somebody got very discouraged, decided they were going to quit because they didn't feel like they were being compensated enough. And then within a matter of days, <laughs> everything changed again. And then it, if that person would have stayed, they would have been compensated exactly the way they needed to be compensated, the way they felt they should be compensated. So it just goes to show you that you, you, you have to stay the course. Yeah. You cannot give up. Now, sometimes you have to detour. There's some things, Brent and I talked about earlier today, where we're going to put some things on the, on the side for a minute until some things cha take, take place. But that doesn't mean you give up. You just have to adjust. That's a big, that's a big difference between quitting and adjusting. At any rate, uh, that's just something I wanted to bring up. And then uh, another topic is uh, how people mistake kindness for weakness. It's been one of my biggest faults in my life because I'm a pretty easygoing guy and I'm pretty generous. And then the wrong person gets involved with you, like we talked about earlier about con artists or people that are uh, disingenuous, come across one way, but they're really another way. You got to be really careful, guys, because if you, if, you if you don't really watch out for yourself... Before you know it, somebody's going to steal your heart or steal your money, and then you're going to be in trouble. And and you say people perceive that as weakness? Well, I think it's they perceive uh, kindness uh, for weakness. That's an old saying. Huh. Yeah. I don't. You don't. You don't I see don't it that like way. that. I I think people take advantage of you sometimes when you're kind. Yeah. But, I, I think man i think being kind is is one of the secret sauces to having a happy life there's another old saying people mistake uh, uh, confidence for arrogance if you're confident you come across like you know what's going on and people oh he's arrogant no he's just confident so i think perception is reality if they see you a certain way then they're gonna people are going to uh make their own judgment and, and oftentimes I think it's they're misinformed but you have to be open-minded when you work with people you can't you have to look this good outweigh the bad don't throw the bat the baby out with the bath water in other words if the good outweighs the bad that's how I've always felt about Brent you know if the good outweighs the bad I keep him around yeah 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 I'm kidding I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to throw in some dry humor here one of my coaches wants to get up and do a com do some comedy at the uh, comedy club really yeah he's brave really, individual yeah he's he's really into that trip and i said well i do a lot of dry humor but he's all about jokes and yeah i said hey i'll go with you i'll be happy to be in the audience for you and i'll take you if you want to go they've got uh, amateur nights i'm sure yes be the captain of your be the captain of your own ship guys you know be be your own boss in your life Take charge. Uh, even if you're making bad choices, it's your life. You'll figure it out. You'll you'll get if you get off track, you'll get back on track. If you fail, it's okay. You'll get back up, brush yourself off, and keep moving. Don't be a follower. Be a leader. Take charge of, in your of your life. Be the be the captain of your own ship. Any breaking news? Yes. How about? How about how about that? Well, <laughs> you know it's almost Halloween. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. And in Portland, Oregon, it's time for the Bat Beauty Contest. Oh my gosh. The uh, Bureau of Bat Land Beauty. Management has a online competition where you get to pick out the cutest bat. Come on. For real? And yes, and the one that took the first round of the most votes the bat is named Sir Flaps a lot. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Sir Flaps. <laughs> That's hilarious. Sir Flaps a lot. That's hilarious. So uh, you can go online and vote. I think it goes on for like a week. Wow, but, uh, it's in Portland, Oregon. 
That's and then, interesting. And then today, again, Halloween, Halloween being tomorrow, today cel- the country celebrates its favorite vegetable with National Candy Corn Day. Candy corn. You like candy corn? I, I haven't eaten it in a long time, but Me I, neither. I remember I like what it. I used to. I like it. It's National Candy, candy corn. corn Day. Wow. Yeah. It's exciting. It's on the on the day uh, I, I call it Halloween Eve. Halloween Eve. Yes. <laughs> well, I think we've bored everybody enough, don't you? Sure. The main topic I was going to talk about today was going to be accomplishments, but I think I'll save that for next week. Oh, is that a juicy one? Yeah. It's a good one. It's one of my favorite topics. You know, I, I talk about it all the time, but I wanted to like go down uh, go down the list and kind of uh, analyze it in more depth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because it's so important. It's really, it, if, if you didn't it, do anything else in your life but focus on that, you'd be okay. Isn't it weird how some people uh, are offended or uncomfortable with certain words? True. I, uh, I know someone that cannot despise. You know someone? Yes, one person. That cannot, that despises and cannot stand for anyone to say the word moist. Moist. Yeah, she just like cringes and gets uncomfortable. What would I'm that not be? Sure. Why would that be the case? I don't know. When she was a baby, someone said moist, and they made a loud noise, and it scared her forever. But wow, she, you say moist, and I mean she. If you say it three or four times, she leaves the room. Wow. Yeah, I'm telling you, words can create people to uh, can cause them to react. Wow. What's the old saying? Uh, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yes. It's an old saying. It is. It's old. I don't know where I come up with these old sayings. Because I'm old. That's why I keep coming up with these old (laughs) sayings. I forgot. (laughs) I forgot I was old. That's another thing about working out all the time. You forget you're old. Yes. It's weird. Good. That's good. That's a good thing, huh? Yeah. Got to keep the old body lubricated and moving. Man, I'll tell you what. There were some (laughs) really attractive women at the gym today. Hmm. That's awesome. I mean fit. Yeah. You know, there's nothing like a fit woman. Particularly an old woman. Older woman. Because when women get old and they don't work out, it's not very sexy. But an old woman that works out, it's pretty sexy. On that note, <laughs> I think we about ran out of time, I Ron. guess we're about out of time. Well, guys, <laughs> just remember, if you don't give up, eventually... Sooner or later, the stars are going to line up. And when that happens, it's not like maybe you've hit the jackpot, but it's certainly very rewarding to know that you didn't give up, you didn't quit, stayed the course, worked through all the problems, all the challenges, all the adversities, and finally get to the point where you, you, you can really like chalk some successes up, you know? So, up until that time, and even after that time, just remember, you got to stay positive.